Hi, welcome to Coding Bootcamp Python. Today, we are going to explore numbers, arithmetic operations, and comments. Our computers are designed to store, process, and access data. It's important for you to know that most interesting data in computers, it's basically good storage and representation of large collections of numbers. And so uh, images, well, images are large collections of numbers. They're actually amplitudes of different colors at different screen locations, pixels. Um, there's other representations for images as well. Uh, music is a change in level amplitude with respect to time, and that's also represented as numbers uh, in time. So, yeah, so going in that topic of numbers, uh, for Python, there's actually two different kinds of numbers uh, in basic Python. So we have int uh, numbers that are integers. So integers are whole numbers. So we have 3, 999, minus 5, 0 float these are floating point numbers or decimal point numbers for example 3.14 minus 1.1 5.0 0.0 so we call them floating point numbers in programming if a number has a decimal point it's going to be considered as a floating point number even if it has an integer value 3.0 is a float uh, literal uh, literal is a value um, that's going to be to differentiate it from variables in the future. 3 is an int literal, an integer literal. In general, floating point numbers take up more space than integers in a computer memory for the same number of significant digits because the magnitude has to be stored as well. How do we know what is the type of the literal uh, for a number so we can use the type function okay so if we place for example uh, 3 as a parameter to the type function then type is going to output a string that indicates the value is int is of type int and if you place 3.0 as the parameter then it will output a string that indicates that this is of type float. Of course, if you just write that uh, in your IDE and run it, well, you're not going to see any result in the console because, well, computers do exactly what you tell them to do. And if you forgot to tell them to print the result, that means it's not going to print the result. Yeah, you have to think about that all the time. So you need to embed the functions as we have done previously in this course and explicitly tell Python that you want to print the result of the type function. So type is going to output a string and you need to tell print to print that string. Okay, so proper embedding is gonna be important. Please notice that the print method, uh, the print function takes a parameter between two parentheses an opening and closing parentheses and so does the type function. Consequently, we need to open the uh, type and the print parentheses and close both of these at the end of the function calls. All right, so let's take a look at another example. What if we print type of round of 3.14? There's more layers, three embedded functions here. So please notice that there's three closing parentheses to match the three opening parentheses as well. Now, if this were to be run, you should see something that says that this type is of type integer because the round function is going to modify the value 3.14 to the value 3 which is going to be an integer. So round actually outputs integers. All right. Well, let's take a look at all of this. So to open a file, a Python file, you can simply open your spider IDE. Then click 
the opening folder to open a file. And in my case, I want to open a file which is on my desktop. It is in my coding bootcamp folder and it's lesson2.py. There we go. So I have three print statements. One to print type of three, one to print type of 3.0, then another one to print type of round of 3.14. I don't need the other statements so I will comment them by pressing control 1. Great. Now I shall run this and see what the results are. So we notice that the output states that class for the statement here, the first one on line 8, we have an output of class int. Then we have class float for line 9 and class int again for line 10. So this means that the type of 3 is integer, the type of 3.0 is float, and the type of round of 3.14 is integer as well. Good. So how about arithmetic operations now? So computer science, actually, it's a branch of mathematics. And, you know, all my old computer science teachers had degrees in mathematics because, well, they had studies in mathematics before computer science actually was a separate discipline. Well, it wasn't actually, a there wasn't a department of computer science back then. So does that mean you have to be a math whiz to be a computer programmer? No, but you do need a certain level of math. Uh, if you want to do programming. Okay. Um, you should be able to recognize the proper use of arithmetic operations, know how to use them, when to use them. So what types of operations are going to be the arithmetic operations? We have addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and exponents, modulus, as well as integer division. So let's explore the basic ones the um, plus, minus, multiplication, and division. So 3 plus 1 is equal to 4, 0 minus 3 is equal to minus 3, 6 times 2 is equal to 12, 10.2 divided by 3.0 is equal to 3.4. These are not very mysterious operations. Okay, what happens when we mix integers and floating point numbers? So for instance, what about 3 plus 1.5? What about 4.1 minus 0 0.1 what about 10 divided by 3 the rule is if you have an integer with an integer the result is going to be an integer as well except if you have division in which case you're always going to get a float if you have an integer with a float the result is going to be a float if you have a float with a float the result is also going to be a float so you can also write expressions with more than one operation at which time the precedence rules will apply. So for instance, three plus one minus four is gonna be zero. Uh, six times two plus one times three is going to be 12 plus three, which is going to be 15. And six times one plus two is going to be 18, which is six times three. So. The parentheses are going to be the highest uh, precedence operator. Um, the multiplication and division come before the plus and the minus operations. If there's two operations that have the same priority, the calculation is done from the left to the right. Python can perform one operation at a time only. So as an exercise, 1 divided by 2 times 2 is equal to 1.0. 3 plus 4 times 5 is 35. 6 times 12 plus 3 is 6 times 15 divided by 3. That's actually going to be 30. 3.3 plus 7.7, 3 .3 .7, that's 11 times 2, that's 22. Let's take a look. So we run.
run the operations and get the same results. If you wish to verify the value of these operations, I very much like to actually write uh, in a string what the operation is here and then uh, provide the value by allowing Python to calculate the result. So the first part of this print statement simply is going to output the left part of the equation here. And to the right, what I'm going to get is, well, the calculation of this expression done by Python to get me to the result, which is going to be output. Great. All right, what about the exponent operator? We also call it the power operator. Well, um, for instance, if we have uh, two to the power of three, that's gonna be two times two times two, so two cubed. So that's two to the exponent three. Two to the exponent 0 0.5 is going to be the square root of two. All right, we have also integer division. So that's the double slash. The integer division operation, this is how you used to calculate when you were in little school. Uh, you would not calculate with the decimal points. So for instance, 10 divided by two, that's five. 3.14 divided by two, that's actually equal to one. Uh, using the integer division, 1.9 divided by one is 1.0. Other exa examples might include five divided by two using integer division, then that would give you a total of two since you only get the number two completely in five two times. But there's also a remainder of one and this remainder is going to be calculated with the modulo operator. We also pronounce it mod. So that's the smart name for the division remainder. So five mod two that answers the following question. If you have five bucks, you wanna buy $2 in candy bars, how many can you buy? Or you would buy two of these, but how much money would you have left over in the end? So $1, right? So five integer division by two is going to be equal to two candy bars, and then five mod two is gonna be $1 left over. Okay. You can also write the expressions with more operations and then of course the precedence rules apply again. So the complete uh, order of operations is going to be as presented in this table. The highest precedence operator are the parentheses followed by the exponents followed by unary plus and minus. So if you need to negate the value of a variable, you would use the negative sign, for instance. Then you have multiplication, division, floor division, modulus, or floor division or integer division, followed by addition and subtraction. Let's take a look. So if we actually run these operations, three plus one minus four to the exponent two is going to be equal to minus 12. So I get four to the exponent two, which is 16. Three plus one, that's four minus 16 is minus 12. Great. If I take six and I multiply it by two to the exponent three plus three, times one or one times three, I get 51 because two to the exponent three is eight times six, that's 48 plus three, that's 51. Then the parentheses have the highest priority. So one plus two is equal to three times six, 18. Great. Comments. So why comments? What are comments? Our code is very simple and easy to understand for now. And, uh, you know, as time evolves, we're gonna write code and reach some situations where it's gonna be necessary to explain what the code is. 
and uh, we will forget in time as well what we actually wrote in our code and why we, we wrote it. We don't want to waste time reading and interpreting our code um, when we don't remember what it was anymore. So that's what comments are for. Comments, what are they? They're actually things we want to write in our code to tell us about our code, but we don't want the machine to run these. So these are notes and we call them comments. Comments, they're written for humans, not computers. We say most of the time, <laughs> there's gonna be some very special situations in the far future when you will use comments, not for humans, but for computers. Um, there's two kinds of comments, single line and multi-line comments. Okay, so the single line comment starts with a pound sign. So whatever is after the pound sign is going to be a comment, is going to be ignored by the code interpreter. We usually write single line comments to the right of a short instruction or on the line preceding an instruction. Single line comments belong either to the right or above the line of code which is explained. Multi-line comments, they're gonna be defined by pairs of triple double quotes. All right, triple double quotes. This is a set of three straight double quotation marks. Everything between those two sets of triple double quotes, they're gonna be comments. All right, so it should only be used if you have to write a long comment and it takes more than a single line. So a, pro a programmer can also use just single line comments in place of a multi-line comment. In the Spider IDE, you can use Control-1 to comment or uncomment selected code. This is what I've been doing in this video. A programmer can use comments to temporarily remove code from execution to test alternative commands and to see specific commands causing error, for example. So you've seen me doing that right now in this presentation because I wanted to have only parts of the code running. Great, so I hope that you've enjoyed this video and have a good day.